This lecture focuses on power in organizations. I don't endorse all of these techniques, but I'll talk about them so that you understand the context of how power operates in organizations. Okay. According to Stanford professor Jeffrey a Pfeffer, as a teacher performance in your job doesn't really matter, so long as you keep your boss or bosses happy. So your relationship with your boss is incredibly important to your career. Research I did in business school confirms this point. When my colleagues and I interviewed successful people, a common theme was that they attributed their success to a boss they had had early in their careers. Pfeffer believes sucking up and asking for advice are effective ways of keeping your position and getting promoted. Flattery is surprisingly effective in influencing people. So too, is simply being nice. Other things that work include getting noticed. So seize the opportunities to do public speaking and don't just do your job, but talk about what you accomplished. In particular, take on big projects and then publicize the results. Standing out is something many people avoid because it's risky, but it is one of the keys to gaining power and is well worth the risk if that's what your ambition is. Getting advice from people who are better than you and who are honest can also be key to your success in an organization. After all, how can you improve if you don't know what you're doing wrong? Powerful people are also very good at tolerating conflict. While most people quiver in discomfort, powerful people don't flinch in conflict-laden situations. They can address problems head-on. Having high energy levels is important to success because it's contagious and makes you more influential. Consider exercising and meditating to raise your vitality. There's a Buddhist monk who often talks about how the breath is really the energy that flows in your body. Learn to raise that energy level. Another key to success is the ability to focus. That might include focusing on a particular industry or knowing what tasks are really worth your time and effort. From my experience, industry expertise gives you a strong competitive advantage in the market and makes you far more likely to get powerful positions. One overlooked source of power in organizations is resource control. The people with the most power aren't necessarily the people formulating the big business strategies. They're the people who happen to control resources, including the flow of information. If you position yourself that it, so that information must flow through you, you'll accumulate more power in your company. This is why certain roles like product manager, brand manager, and project manager or program manager often lead to power because there is a lot of information, resources, and connections that need to flow through these positions. Power is also achieved through reputation management. Consider how you're branding yourself and build a reputation around that. Are you consistently reliable? Are you the person to turn to for big projects? Build an image that serves your long-term career goals. Associate with people who align well with what your goals are. According to Pfeffer, gaining high-level status matters more than where you gain that status. For example, if you become the CFO of a less prestigious company, Pfeffer believes your status will transfer to your next job at a more prestigious company. 